lovers and enterprise lovers, I might add. Um, I got something really great to show you guys in this video. Um, we've all, well those of you that love Star Trek like me, we grew up with the Enterprise and doing model kits and things like that. Well, I'm about to present to you is probably the Super Bowl of model kits when it comes to the Enterprise. These are the Polar Lights 1350 scale USS Enterprise. <clears throat> and I have the original series. And I also have the refit. And these models are very large. Um, the refit model is uh, approximately 34 inches. And the original series model is around 32 inches. But these are really, really spectacular models. Um, there were different lighting kits and things like that, but that'll be another time. I'll show you that. In, actually, I'll show you that in a minute. But when it comes to these model kits, this is probably the holy grail of the Enterprise model kits. This is the 50th anniversary edition, by the way. This one is the 50th Anniversary Edition USS Enterprise NCC-1701 Plastic Assembly Model Kit. One 350 scale, skill level 2, ages 10 and up, made by Polar Lights. And the 50th Anniversary features the Smooth Saucer section, um, Smooth Saucer Parts, and Updated Paint Guide. <coughs> Now what I want to do in painting mine is, I want mine, well, I'm going to paint it to the best of my ability to match the paint job that's on the model in the Smithsonian. Um, if you see pictures of that model, you can see that there's a lot of green and brown and mixed in with the gray, and I want to get as close to that as possible. I'm not talking about when they first got it because you had those ugly grid lines on the bottom of the saucer section and, and that just looked terrible. I think that looked terrible. But when they restored it, um, they took those grid lines away. Um, but the top was left mostly original. And I'm going to try to match that. Um, and this model was made to be lit. So it also sells a... Polar Lights came out with a lighting kit. Um, there was a pretty you know, spectacular version of the kit that had the weathering decals and had photo etching sheets and had all kinds of different things in addition to all the lights and all the, the Bessard Collector nacelle engine spinning lights and all that thing, uh, all that kind of stuff, but the, um, I don't know if it's, they figured they could make more money by splitting it up. It's kind of like what they did when Polar Lights issued this model kit for the second time, which is the Polar Lights Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC-1701 Refit Plastic Model Kit 1350 Scale Skill Level 2 Ages 10 and Up This model kit, um, the first time it was available came with the the Aztecing um, as a decal for the entire ship <clears throat> and they since then have removed that and, sell, and they sell it separately and it's like $57 um, at one time, it used to come with the ship. Um, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to put that much time and effort and money into a model, um, I'm going to mask it and I'm going to paint it. It's going to be the five colors. Um, and I want her to look just like she flew off the screen from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Now, I hear that this is one of the most difficult and time-consuming models to make. Now, if you're like me, you love Star Trek... And the Enterprise is probably the love of my life. I, I just can't get enough of her. From my childhood to now, I just love the Enterprise. The, the original. And the refit is gorgeous, too. It's like a pearl sparkling in space. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I was very excited when it came out with these kits. Um, from my understanding, the saucer section alone is a size almost as big as the box. So it's a very large model. <clears throat> And it helps if you have room. Now, we recently moved, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to have my own kind of, like a library. 
Um, it's a room that has a lot of shelves in it where I'm able to display a lot of my Star Trek stuff and a lot of my other passions. My I love the New England Patriots and you know my get I'm a musician, so my guitars and things like that. But these model kits <clears throat> are the creme de la creme of model kits. And what we'll do is I'll take you through what the boxes say and all the different detailing that they have and we'll start with the original series okay so we got we'll start off with the original series uh, USS Enterprise and as you can see the box art is really cool they have the Enterprise coming at you um, you can see the nacelles lit and the lights now the model kits don't come with lights but they're very, very light friendly. I guess they made them to be sold, um, to be lit, you know, lit. And <clears throat> these are no exception. They came out with a lighting set for this kit. And actually, uh, I'm going to show that to you in a second. But <clears throat> looking at the box art, it's the 50th anniversary USS Enterprise, NCC-1701. Let me show you the, the back of the box. It's got all kinds of really amazing stuff with it. It says, finished model measures over 32 inches long. And you can see a spectacular shot of the Enterprise. And this is actually the model kit. Um, ultimate authenticity based on measurements taken from the 11 foot miniature used to film Star Trek the original series and of course that's the one at the Smithsonian um, and that's the one I actually want to model uh, no pun intended um, the coloring after <clears throat> now the lighting kit I have does come with the weathering lines um, not not this the lighting kit I'm going to show you that in a minute but I'm thinking I want to paint them on, kind of like the way the one in the Smithsonian has. Um, I notice that there are different colors. But this one comes with a miniature shuttle and it's included with markings for the Galileo and the Columbus. So you get the shuttlecraft and you can pick which ones you know want to make. Um, sturdy display base with a metal support rod. Again you can see the finished model kit and it looks like that one's lit as well. Um, on the refit box the model kit is shown it's not lit at all but this one is you can see detailed bridge featuring a low screen captain's chair and consoles this is really really cool now I did the cutaway version of a vintage um, model kit of the Enterprise the AMT um, and the bridge was really small <clears throat> I painted it the best I could and I showed you guys my version of the cutaway Enterprise that one measured about I want to say around 18, 19, 20 inches long around that scale. Um, th but this one is going to be 32 inches long. So this one's going to be much bigger. So I'm hoping that the bridge is going to be a lot bigger to actually put the detail in. And I'm thinking about getting the, the sets, um, the sticker set, the additional um, set where you can actually put the decals in and set it up to make it look really, really, really great. <clears throat> it shows you a picture of the bridge. Um, it shows you the interior of the hangar deck, and that's just so cool. This this model kit is just amazing. And it shows you the accessory packs that you can get on the bottom. Take your model to the next level with these accessory sets. Accessory pack requires no soldering. It has the nacelle motors, colored clear parts, and clear hangar deck parts. And the, this one also shows it's the pilot pack, where if you want, you can make the ship into the pilot version from the Menagerie. <clears throat> that would be Captain Christopher Pike's USS Enterprise. Has the first and second pilot parts, the nacelle caps, the bridge dome, and much more. So, when it comes to this model, Star Trek, the original series, 50th anniversary edition, USS Enterprise, NCC 1701 Plastic Assembly Model Kit. In the year 2245, Starfleet commissioned the starship USS Enterprise and assigned her to the registry number NCC 1701. 
She was destined for greatness. The Enterprise began her memorable five-year mission in 2264 under the command of Captain James T. Kirk, joined by Vulcan science officer Mr. Spock. Kirk and crew set out to pioneer the final frontier, visiting strange new worlds and discovering new life and civilizations. That was just the beginning. The Enterprise served her crew well on their journey to the far reaches of space, earning the ship the legendary status in the history of both Starfleet and the United Federation of Planets. Now, you, you got a lot of different sci-fi um, shows out there. And I'm a fan of Star Trek, but that's my favorite, the original series, but there are so many other great ones. Um, there's Space 1999, uh, there's Battlestar Galactica, uh, the original with Lauren Green. Um, that there's Star Trek, the, the newer ones are Star Trek Enterprise and, and Voyager, and the, there's just so many sci-fi shows that are out over the years. But the one most, oh, excuse me, Star Wars, there's all the Star Wars franchises, but the most recognizable spaceship, in my, his, in my opinion, the history of the, the human race, is the Enterprise. She is the crown jewel and she leads the way, where everything is f second. Star Trek, the original series, first aired in 1966 and left an incredible impact on its adoring audience and continues to aspire technology 50 years later. Among its fully realized characters, colorful costumes, exciting new worlds, and technical marvels, one of elements that has stood the test of time the design of the USS Enterprise. The starship at the center of the adventure, this model kit of the Constitution-class starship was mastered <clears throat> from hands-on research gleaned from the original filming miniature during its conservation by the Smithsonian Institute. So, this is uh, modeled after that ship as well, and I'm hoping to get the paint down really well. The glue during the... Um, Though glue is necessary, the kit assembles easily with the aid of the included pictorial guide. Parts come in copper, clear, and two shades of gray to minimize the need for paint. All the details are featured from the precision crafted interior bridge, hangar deck, and shuttlecraft to thorough water slide decal markings. So they're marketing this as the go all end all of all model kits where minimal um, detail work uh, is necessary, minimal paint. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Um, so let me go ahead. I talked about the lighting kits that come with this. Um, let me go ahead and get those for you. Okay, so I told you about the lighting kits for this model. And Polar Lights has, has come out with um, model kits and lighting kits. The lighting kits are for that model kit. And there, were an, there was an earlier version of this lighting kit, um, but I do not have that one. And there was, um, this is not the original version of the 350. Um, and I do not have that one either. I just have the 50th anniversary. I was waiting for the 50th um, anniversary to get mine. But when it comes to the lighting kits... These are kits, let me be able to show you guys, that supposedly come with all the lighting to make the ship look just like the TV model. And the first kit that they came out with is that they got the deluxe accessory set. And you can see it's got the weathering decals for the ship, it's got the photo wet sheet, and it's got different stuff. It's got the lights and all that stuff, as you can see. And I'll put up pictures of the stuff. Um, with this, though, it, I guess they decided that they could make more money by taking these out and selling these separately. So what they did was they went and they re-released the lighting kit. Let me show this to you. Or they got the lighting kit now where it does not come with the photo etch set or the weathering decals. But it does have the rest of the stuff to make the ship lit. You can see the back. 
You can see the difference in the, the backs. Just to show you guys the different ones. So let me go ahead and explain to you um, what each set consists of. You can start with this one. Make sure you can you can see this okay. This is the Polar Lights Star Trek the Original Series Deluxe Accessory Set. Light kit, photo etch parts, weathering decals for the 1350 scale USS Enterprise NCC 1701, skill level 3, ages 12 and up. Light kit with fan motors, photo etch sheet and decals, and it shows a beautiful picture of the Enterprise on the front of the box. <coughs> I'm going to turn it around to the back of the box and it shows you a lit Enterprise. Star Trek the original series, AC power adapter included, accurate Bessard lighting effects, flashing lights controlled by plug and play circuit boards hidden inside of the model. It shows you the clear plastic parts, the hangar bay, the electronic motors that spin the uh, nacelles. I mean, this is just so exciting. This is amazing. I can't wait to get this model done. Photo etch grills and weathering decals for the, um, the sheets that make it look weathered. Take the 1350 scale USS Enterprise NCC 1701 to the next level. Let me show you guys can see that. A next, next level of realism and life that plain plastic cannot deliver. Weathering decals give the ship a space-worn look without the need for paint. Includes iconic surface features such as the rust ring on the saucer section, the brass photo etched sheet, um, supplies replacement parts to, the, to deliver crisp, intricate grills with in-scale openings, all wiring, plug-and-play circuit boards, and 95 LED lights. They comprise the electronic light kit. It features a solder-free assembly to power lights and spin the included engine fan motors. Included clear and colored clear plastic parts finish the set to supply vibrant colored lights to minimize the need for paint. And it shows you the, uh, again, the beautiful model of the Enterprise. And that's the deluxe accessory kit. And one that's, I guess, more readily available. Incidentally, it took me a lot to get this one because every place was sold out. I had to actually get mine from Australia. Um, you know, from the other side of the world, literally, to come and uh, to get this accessory kit. But I had wanted this kit. Um, to go with my Enterprise. You, you can just get the regular kit and buy all these things separately. Um, however, I just, I, I really wanted the deluxe set. So this is the other one that came out that does not have the photo etch set and the weathering decals and the different things. This is the Star Trek the Original Series lighting kit for 1350 scale USS Enterprise NCC 1701. Skill level 3 ages 12 and up and includes the fan motors for the nacelles and colored and clear plastic parts. Looking at the back of the box you can see that they're different. This one also has the Enterprise model. Um, it appears to be lit. Um, it has the AC-DC power adapter which is included. Accurate Bessard lighting effect. 95 LED lights just like the Deluxe. Um, flashing lights controlled by plug-and-play circuit boards hidden inside the model just like the other set. All wiring included, no soldering required. Electronic motors rotate the engine fans, complete lighting and wiring harnessing, colored clear plastic lights, and clear, past clap clear plastic parts that make lighting a breeze. Again for the cargo bay, not the cargo bay, the um, hangar deck. <clears throat> Take the 150 scale 1350 scale USS Enterprise NCC 1701 to the next level of realism in life. That plain plastic cannot deliver all wiring, plug and play circuit boards, and 95 LED lights comprise the electronic light 
kit. It features a solder free assembly to power the lights and spin the occluded engine motors. Included clearing plastic parts, finish and set to supply vibrant colors to minimize the need for paint. Again, it's minimizing the need of, uh, for paint. And they do sell like other versions of lighting kits for this model. If you go on eBay, you can see, I mean, these were expensive. Um, this one on average is about $125. And this one on average is about hundred and between $150 and $175. They do sell kits um, out there, uh, such as eBay. You can look it up and they will have kits that aren't that expensive. Now keep in mind that they're not made from polar lights. Polar lights are the same manufacturers of the actual model kit that these kits are going to light. I'm not saying that the others are not good, but they might not be as model friendly. So you want to read the instructions and you know, as with everything else, you probably are going to get what you pay for. So if you're going to spend all the money on this kit, you might as well just spend the extra money and get the Polar Lights kit instead of taking the chance on getting something that's not by Polar Lights. For this model kit, um, the other one, the refit, does not have a kit uh, light set, but we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> but that is the Polar Lights 50th Anniversary USS Enterprise. 1350 scale and these are the lighting sets the deluxe accessory set and the lighting kit um, that are available with this model so that being said we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the USS Enterprise refit okay so we're gonna move on to the polar lights 1350 scale USS Enterprise refit and this is the polar lights 1350 scale Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC 1701 refit plastic model kit 1350 scale skill level 2 and this this is actually the 50th anniversary edition just like the the original series um, Enterprise I showed you and this one had already had um, a copy of it released this is the updated copy this one does not come with the photo etch, uh, the photo, um, what am I trying to say, Aztec, the Aztecing for the ship. Um, the original release of this model had the decals that would cover the ship with the Aztec marking to simulate the paint job. But they decided that they could sell it separately, I guess, and make more money, as opposed to including it in the kit. Um, it doesn't really matter because what I'm interested in is the painting guide. Because I'm going to go ahead I'm going to paint mine. Um, the way I'm going to try to paint it is to make it look like the Starship Enterprise from the Star Trek The Motion Picture. And you can see the box art. It's got a beautiful shot of the Enterprise. And she's coming right at you and is Captain Kirk. Well, if this is Star Trek The Motion Picture, this is Admiral Kirk. And this is Mr. Spock. You remember Star Trek The Motion Picture. He was on Vulcan and he had a calling, he was called back, he was um, summoned through his thoughts back to the Starfleet. Um, he was looking for his place in the galaxy. And that was, I think that was one of the most underrated Star Trek movies. Um, I thought it was great, I thought the effects were spectacular. I remember sitting in a movie theater when I was a kid looking up at the screen for the refit Enterprise at the first time and had a huge lump in my throat and I was just in total awe of how beautiful the ship was. Because remember, this is the first time we've seen the Enterprise since the original series. <clears throat> but let me go ahead and show you the back of the box. Make sure that it's in a good uh, setting so you can see it. Um, you can see the back of the box. It's actual, um, an actual model kit was built to put on the back of the box. Um, interestingly, because it does not come with the Aztecing, I'm wondering if they went ahead and they painted the Aztecing on. I'm hoping it comes with a paint guide. Um, but this model is not lit. For some reason, Polar Lights did not feel it necessary to make a lighting kit for this Enterprise. Um, it would have been nice if they would have made lighting kits for both ships, because, you know, the Enterprise, the original one, 
had a pretty awesome lighting set. <clears throat> um, and this one does not. Um, but you can look on eBay and there are several places that you can get a lighting kit for this. Um, and they just make the model look incredible. But um, I'm going to look into that. Again, unfortunately Polar Lights, as of yet, does not have a lighting set for this. Ultimate Authenticity based on measurements taken from the miniature used to film Star Trek The Motion Picture. So this is Star Trek, uh, this is the NCC-1701 refit, this is not the NCC-1701A. And for those of you that are confused, Polar Lights also has a 1350 uh, scale USS Enterprise NCC-1701-A. This is not the A. The A clearly has the designation um, on the front of the box with the A. <clears throat> this is the refit. Kit includes all technical and registry markings as well as the strong back decals, uh, decals and two color schemes. So I'm thinking it's it's, it's funny because you don't really see all this stuff on the, the camera. To actually to the point where I was wondering if this stuff really was if the model really looked like this, but I guess the lighting, when they lit the ship to film the movie, it took away a lot of the the detail work because of the glare, because of the painting. Um, this model f finished will be over 34 inches long, and check out the cargo deck, the shuttle bay. Isn't it awesome? Look at just look at the detail in that. Highly detailed interior docking bay features a shuttlecraft and work bees. It's just amazing. And you remember the little ships, the, the work bees, but they also had the little transport ships that brought, when Mr. Scott brought Admiral Kirk to the Enterprise for the first time, and he kind of gave him the scenic route while she was in space dock. And it's cool because the base, the display base, um, if you remember Star Trek, the motion picture, the, um, the space dock that she was in is, resembles the base a lot. Includes display stand featuring a sturdy metal support rod because this model is large 34 inches and with the lighting kit and everything the both models are going to be pretty uh, hefty Photos shown actually are the assembled model and painted model kits So they went ahead and they did the aztec on it. You can see it, um, it, it the some of the videos on YouTube of people have done the masking and the paint, the five colors, it, it's just amazingly beautiful. It just jumps out and it sparkles like a pearl. It's, it's totally amazing. And I'm very much looking forward to doing this. And Again, you're not going to get the money. Spend the money on this kit. Spend the money on all the stuff that goes with it and not paint it. You have to paint it. You, you know, it's you can't go that far and not give her the attention that she deserves. At least I can't. I mean, on the bottom it shows you um, things that are available, and it shows you the Aztec decal set. Take your model to the next level with the full Aztec decals available, and it shows the other um, Enterprise model kit, the 50th anniversary that I just shown you. But the features on on this and the the, the uh, set the complete Aztec decals to easily add surface detail. Alternate registration for either the three of the Constitution class ships in the fleet and alternative engineering section colors. So that's just the decal sheet that originally came with the um, first release of this model kit. But since it uh, does not Star Trek USS Enterprise NCC-1701 refit plastic assembly model kit 1350 scale ages 2. In 2270, immediately after the Enterprise's historic five-year mission under the command of James T. Kirk, the Enterprise vessel received significant upgrades to, the, to most systems, including a new state-of-the-art bridge and sleek new warp drive nacelles. This refit enterprise was first commanded by Captain William Decker until the V'ger incident forced then Admiral Kirk to assume command. Of course, Kirk wanted her back, and you know, it, it kind of sucks for Decker, 
who actually fell in love with the Enterprise and to have him just her just taken away from him. But you know, I can see Captain Kirk's point too because I don't know about you guys, but I certainly would want her back. In 2285, the ship was damaged by battle with a um, with Khan Nuning Singh and headed back to Earth for repairs. Shortly thereafter, the Enterprise was self-destructed when threatened by the Klingon capture over the Genesis planet in 2285. Starfleet renamed the USS Yorktown NCC-1717 to USS Enterprise NCC-1701A and placed it under the command of demoted Admiral James T. Kirk. The command was given by the Federation Council in gratitude for saving Earth from the alien probe. If you remember, that's when they had commandeered the Klingon ship, the Bird of Prey in Star Trek III. After Kirk ordered the destruction of the Enterprise, um, he tricked Maltz um, into beaming up him and then reincarnated Mr. Spock. And they ended up taking over the um, Klingon ship. They go back to Earth... And then they go, have to go back in time for the probe for the, um, the whales. But the, the Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, was just devastating to me. To sit in a the movie theater and watch the thing that I love that much blow up. And of course they dragged it out. It was You could see how painful it was for her to be blown apart and then burn up in the atmosphere. It just I was like sitting in a movie theater just bawling my eyes out. The final mission of the Enterprise A came in 2293 when the Klingon moon exploded, crippling the Klingon Empire and opening up a major peace um, initiative. Ultimately, the Enterprise and her crew saved the diplomatic talks from conspirators in both the Federation and Klingon governments, ushering in a new era of peace to the galaxy. Its significant role in the exploration of the galaxy ensures that AM Enterprise will conjure visions of great heroism and galactic adventure to the next generation and beyond. The 1350 scale plastic kit of the Enterprise features authentic styling and accurate detail and includes over 150 plastic parts, decal sheets, and detailed instructions. The fully assembled ship measures approximately 35 inches long and includes display stand, decals, and decals in this release, including all registry and permanent markings, as well as a deflector housing and strong back markings in two color schemes. Optional decals are included to badge the ships and the... Oh, so you can actually make this the NCC-1701A as well. I'm wondering if they even... if that issue of the NCC-1701A was discontinued? I don't know if they make it anymore, or if it's been a, just a one-time thing where they just take the refit and you can make it into the A. But when they released all of these, they had the original series in 1350, and then they had the refit in 1350, and then they had the, the Enterprise A in 1350. On the refit, the USS Enterprise, it looked, she kind of had like a bluish tint to her, and she was, you could see the saucer section on the box. With When it came to the NCC-1701A, you could see her leaving what looked like dry dock, uh, space dock. So the boxes were different. Um, and obviously the Enterprise A is not the refit. And... Um, In 2287, the Enterprise A was launched into duty primarily when diplomatic representatives on Nimbus 3 were held hostage by Cybok, a renegade Vulcan and Captain Spock's half brother. Cybok and his followers hijacked the ship and took it from what was presumably the mythical planet of Kajari, the center of the galaxy, where Kirk and his crew eventually regained control of the ship. You remember, Kajari was their interpretation of heaven, or Eden, or... Um, and they finally had gotten there, and it was that life form that pretended to be God, but it was not God. Um, and that was the Enterprise A as well. So the Enterprise has been qu through quite a few uh, interesting missions, to say the least. Um, the name Enterprise, of course, lives on because they had the NCC-1701B, the NCC-1701C, which we really didn't see that much of, 
In Star Trek The Next Generation, the episode from all um, yesterday's Enterprise featured the Enterprise C. Then there was the Enterprise D, the NCC 1701D from Star Trek The Next Generation. And of course, the NCC 1701E, the Enterprise E from the, the final movie that they had done. Uh, well, the final movie with Star Trek The Next Generation as the characters. So the Enterprise is transformed into different things and they actually, they've honored it uh, wonderfully. I think the most popular Enterprises, I want to say the, um, I mean the refit is absolutely gorgeous and stunning, but my personal favorite is the Enterprise, um, the original series. But I'm thinking that the most popular ones, from what I've seen anyway, are probably between the um, the original series and probably the NCC 1701D, the Enterprise D. Uh, the Enterprise D seems to get a lot of attention, and deservedly so, because she's an absolutely spectacular ship. But that's another uh, another video. This video was to show you guys the Polar Lights 1350 scale USS Enterprise from the original series and the USS Enterprise from the refit, the Star Trek the Motion Picture uh, movie. And they are both in 350 scale, 1350. And I will eventually, when I get to them, I will do an unboxing of them for you guys, including the light set um, that came with the original. Um, I ordered a light set for the refit and I'm waiting for that to come in and then I'm gonna once I open it I'm looking to get a better idea of the painting instructions for the um, the Aztecing. but that'll be in another video and I want to thank you guys for watching and if you had any you know curiosities about these models um, again I haven't seen the insides yet um, I will do an unboxing on each one when I do the builds um, but these models just are phenomenal and I look forward very much to making it and if you guys uh, were curious about buying one you know you, you if you can you should because these are the like the ultimate these are the, this is the Super Bowl of Enterprise models that being said um, thank you for listening to my ramblings and um, see you guys soon